Hello everybody and welcome to the J72 Gaming Channel. My name is Jacob, you can just call me Jay here. But more importantly, I would like to welcome you all to the j Rassic <laughs> Conservation and Research Facility here for dinosaurs up in Canada. Today I wanted to give you guys a tour of my facility and kind of show off what we do here. So you can see here right off the entrance, kind of most people come in by helicopter in the arrival. And uh, first things first, we've got all of our staff quarters. So, you know, we've, we facilitate a lot of staff members here. We've got internships along with uh, professionals working side by side to really learn everything we can about the dinosaurs here. We've got each of these uh, staff quarters where they kind of go to relax and sleep overnight. And we've got each of them uh, brought up, uh, split up into teams, excuse me. So you can see here, we've got our carnivore uh, team, our carnivore house, if you will. Excuse me, sir, I don't want to run you over. And here we've got our uh, flying team. And this one is the herbivore team which also comes complete with a little cafe so if you guys need a little bit of a food go ahead and uh, hop in there today we're going to be taking a look at three dinosaur pens we've got three carnivores they are all that we work on here at this facility up in canada although we are branching out to multiple research facilities across the land and more to be coming soon with tours for you guys so here you can see we've got our cafe that's where most people get their food kind of a bit of a corner store here because uh, we are out in rural canada you can see here we've got our medical center, and this is really the central hub of our facilities here. We've got our main control center there, which is also welcoming uh, visitors as a visitor center as well. Here you can see our science center. A lot of the uh, real heavy detail and data goes into work in that building right there. So fantastic location. Now over here we get to a little bit of the necessary maintenance things. We've got a, a safety box over there, a bunker if you will, just in case some crazy blizzard rolls in or we get a dinosaur released. You can kind of hear some dinosaurs roaring in the background. Like I said, we'll get to them very, very soon. And here we have our expedition area. So this is where our ranger team uh, is set up and they really, in fact, you can probably hear them. Unless that gate is opening for me ever so wonderful these gates <laughs> but we will get into there this is on our right going to be our baryonics center now at our facility here we've got two baryonyxes a breeding pair we've got dolly and daryl both fantastic dinosaurs and we will go check them out in just a bit but let me show you one more thing that we've got going on here now this is our hatchery setup now we've got state of the line top of the line research facilities here at J. Rassic Research Center. And a lot of uh, egg hatching and DNA splicing goes on in these research facilities. Some top of the line stuff that goes way over my head as a tour guide. But first things first, I wanna take you guys down here. Now, you can see that we're passing some red banners. We've got all of our locations here designated by colors. So we've got our central area is designated by blue and our Carno area is designated by red. That is gonna be the first place we take a look at because I think you guys wanna see some Carnos, am I right? Here we've got our second expedition force, some ranger stations and a helicopter. Always good to be equipped with a little bit more than one. On the right here, we might actually sneak a peek of some the Baryonyx pair down there, if you can see. In fact, let's go ahead and stop real quick and uh, take a closer look at these guys. Now, we will go ahead and get into the cage later, um, but I want to give you guys just a quick view of them. You can see them down there kind of hanging out. Like I said, we'll go see them closer. But first, let's go take a look at this Carno area. Now we have one more bunker. We've got these bunkers set up at every single location of the park. Or excuse me, not a park. This is for research only <laughs> of the research facility. Now you won't see any tourists here. Everyone you see is a staff and member here at the facility. We have our viewing platforms. These are where our scientists and our trainees go to really get uh, a lot of the research done. There's a lot of uh, notebooks and data collecting that is done in there and both have a fantastic view here into the wildlife refuge. But I do want to mention it is important as we go in here to keep your arms and feet inside the Jeep at all times. You all sign the waiver. You know how this goes. It may or may not be safe. You can see there is one of our rangers who is returning from a routine status checkup of our carnos and that is actually letting me know that they are over here so in this pen we have four carnos that we captured from the wild as you guys will know they we had a bit of a outbreak in the jurassic world park and uh, they are running kind of all over the world and so it is our job here to contain these dinosaurs let's go ahead and get a close look up on one of these carnos 
Now we have multiple skin colorations here with the Carnos. So we can see this one is mainly hailing from the desert, but we have one over there, which I believe is from uh, deep in the forest, as well as an Arctic skin over there. So many skins hanging out here. Let's go ahead and get a closer view of one of these guys. How you doing? We might as well give it a scan while we're here. How you doing? Looks like our Carnotaurus is doing wonderful. They are very content here in the facility. Great place for them to relax and hang out, and uh, much better to have them here than in the in the wild. We're gonna go ahead and get going. We don't want that guy to uh, chase us down here. I will go ahead and show you guys kind of how we feed them over here by the water. Down here, you can see one of the Carnos is heading over to presumably get some food. Oh, this is perfect. Let's take a look while we can of the Carno feasting. Wonderful. So we feed them both live and uh, already killed, pre-killed prey here. Give them a little bit of both. We want them to have enrichment with the live prey, but we also enjoy making sure that they are constantly fed. Now a night falls and we continue watching these magnificent beasts kind of feast and some start to call it a, a night for the for the evening. Uh, let me talk to you guys about some of the notable aspects of this dinosaur. So the, these Carnotaurus are mainly notable for their thick horns above their eyes. The Carnotaurus is a theropod from the late Cretaceous period, and it weighs about two tons and spans about 10 meters in length with two long rows of sharp teeth. This Carnotaurus is a carnivorous dinosaur, and it was the apex predator of its era. And the combination of its unique horns and its flesh-ripping teeth gave the Carnotaurus its name, which means the meat-eating bull. They are also known to charge, which is why I'm keeping my distance over here. In fact, this guy here looks like he... Okay, never mind. I was going to say he's looking at us fairly well. Prey and eyes. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a, a drive-by as we head off. We don't want to get too close to uh, disturb our dinosaurs, but they are more or less relatively used to our Jeeps here at the Conservation Center as we are continuously and constantly doing routine checks. Oh, we're going to get a little bit of a social display with the Cardos. There they go. They are constantly vying for uh, dominance in the pack. We are still doing research on which one we believe is the Alpha here at the J. Rassic Conservation Center. All right, that's going to be our Carnotaurus. Let's go ahead and uh, head on back here. Next up, I will take you guys into the Baryonyx Center before finishing up with our Allosaurus pen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we arrive back here at the central hub of the park, I want to direct your attention again to those flags. You can see that the flags designate everywhere in the park. So red was our Carnotaurus, blue is going to be our central science facility hub, and yellow is going to be for our Baryonyx. Eventually, we will get to green, which is going to be our Allosaurus. Let's go in here, and luckily for us, one of our Baryonyxes is right here. Let's go ahead and again, we want to keep our distance, but uh, looks like she's docile. This, I believe, is Dolly. Let me go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about the Baryonyx that we have here. Now, these are large theropods, just like all the other dinosaurs we're going to be seeing today. And they can grow up to 10 meters in length, and it's mainly noticeable for its crocodile-like jaws. The Baryonyx is primarily a pescivore, although it does live on land. It can grab fish out of the rivers with its long claws and swim in shallow waters to catch prey with its long serrated teeth. Now, it is also believed that the Baryonyx is also a scavenger, feeding on the carcasses of smaller dinosaurs on land, which is why we have chosen to do the same thing with the Carnos here uh, with their diet. We give them live food, which we dispense right here. So you may or may not see a goat running around. We always keep them stocked here. Uh, but I also want to show you guys that we feed them fish. We have multiple fisheries that uh, feed through pipes. Here you can see our other Baryonyx hanging out. They do like their... Oh, it's roaring at us, letting us know not to get too close. <laughs> but they do appreciate their, uh, their, their mix of open prairie, rivers, and um, deep, dark forest over there. So here you can see we have our fisheries. These are set up from uh, a fishery tank that we have in the Science Center that feeds them directly into the river here for our baryonyx. 
very awesome stuff. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a closer look at this guy as we are in the area. And generally, these guys are a little bit more docile than the Carnotaurus and the Allosaurus that we have in the other pens. But again, we don't want to risk it and get too close. They are still giant creatures. How's it going, Daryl? You doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> Wonderful to get so close to such magnificent beasts. It's very, very cool. All right, let's head on over, and I will show you guys our last dinosaur pack of today. We have three Allosauruses hanging out over in this side of the park. Excuse me, I keep saying park. It is a conservation center. As you can see here, we actually have one of our rangers heading out for probably their routine check on the Allosauruses. We have all of our rangers set up with priorities here in the park. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> not park i'm gonna get fired for this uh conservation center but yes over here we have yet another one of the bunkers necessary just in case and we have an additional medical wing over here we have an additional medical wing over here mainly because the allosaurus tend to get a little bit more sick than some of the other dinosaurs and so uh we decided to put an extra medical bay over here for some close proximity to these uh magnificent dinosaurs let's go in and try to find some shall we now, these are also fed, just like the other carnivores, live prey, as well as stationary pre-killed. And they are also much larger than the other carnos and baryonyx that we have been seeing. So here, here we can sit back and kind of observe. We don't want to get too close to our, our hardworking rangers. They are on the clock doing status checks, routine status checks of all of our allosauruses here. So you can have, we have our three, they enjoy swimming and lounging and being basically giant dogs lounging right next to their food. Let's go ahead and pull up here and I'll get a closer look for you guys with our binoculars. How's it going, sir? He's looking, he's looking good. I'm gonna routine static chess as I am qualified to do such if I am out here. Look at them go. Ain't that cool. Oh, it looks like these two are doing very similar to what the Carnotauruses were doing. They are vying for uh, dominance in the pack. Again, we are still doing constant research to determine which one of our dinosaurs is actually the alpha dinosaur of the pack. Ooh, he's getting a little feisty. Let's give him a little bit of distance while I uh, tell you guys some information on our Allosauruses here. Now, the Allosaurus is considered one of the most fearsome dinosaurs to have ever roamed Earth. They weigh up to about two tons, and they measure around 12 meters in length, so they are absolutely massive creatures. Like I said, a little bit bigger than the other dinosaurs that we've been checking out today at the Conservation Center. Now, these guys are the apex predator of the late Jurassic period, and the Allosaurus's enormous skull contains rows of large serrated teeth for tearing flesh, while its long, powerful tail helps it balance. Truly a predator you do not not want to mess with now folks like we have mentioned i don't want to get too close to these uh dinosaurs i don't want to put you in jeopardy here as the audience but i do want to get close and show you just a little bit of a close-up here but i'm going to be constantly monitoring the temperament here of our allosauruses as we don't want them to chase us at all but it looks like they like i said before are very used to uh our jeeps here and uh, tolerate us at least a little bit, as you can see there. Very content with our presence. Wonderful creatures, these. Absolutely stunning. And this backdrop of Canada, man, we are surely lucky to be out here today, folks, aren't we? Well, folks, that is going to conclude the tour here at the Jurassic Conservation Center. Please don't tell my bosses that I kept calling it a park. They really don't like that uh, <laughs> that term here as it uh, makes people think that we're, you know, bringing these dinosaurs in just to look at them and awe and Google at them. And, uh, you know, the culture of the world right now doesn't necessarily look too fondly about that uh, based off of the uh, history of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchises. But I do want to thank you once again for checking out the Conservation Center. Again, it is very important that we continue research on these dinosaurs to help better understand them and help us facilitate the recapture and the relocation of all the dinosaurs out in the uh, greater United States area. I'm going to leave you guys off here at the uh, little shop here in case you would like to get some gifts or some food. But again, I thank you all for your trip here today at the Jurassic Conservation Center. Hope you have a good rest of your day.
All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a uh, role play with the uh, the tour. I do plan to do a little bit more of those videos as we go on. I did want to give you guys kind of before the outro uh, here, uh, just kind of a bird's eye view of what I've done with the park. Um, again, not park. Conservation Center is really the, the theme I was going for with this design. Now, I didn't mess with anything. I want it to be clear that... Um, I have only played two campaign missions at this time of recording, and thus I don't have many dinosaurs to work with, and I don't have many decorations to work with, but I think I did my best um, with what I had available, and I really kind of didn't mess with any of the terrain that much. I think I might have added a little bit here and there. I did go in and add some rocks in the Carno area, and I made sure that the Allosaurus had more trees. Um, but generally, I kind of took the topography and the terrain that they give you here um, in the very first uh, sandbox mode that you have here in Canada. Uh, I, I just kind of like let it be natural, right? And kind of kind of work with it. Um, last thing I do want to show off is kind of this area here from above, as I did put a lot of effort in just kind of making it look more or less uh, as realistic as possible as you guys saw from the tour um, this here is kind of some options that you can do to make kind of like a little cafe area so i'm really excited about the future of this game and kind of playing more campaign i'm going to be unlocking more things for us to kind of mess with um and i can make more videos like this one with a little bit more um you know maybe i can make like an actual park where people are, are coming to visit and we have like the hotels and all that side of things uh and then continue making more conservation centers the one aspect of this game that i'm very very interested in i'm not going to go too far into it right now but it's this territory thing um basically the dinosaurs have territory ranges and so that allows us to do mold more dinosaurs like multiple species in one pen and that will um basically allow us to have like an actual wildlife conservation area that has a lot of different dinosaur species and some prey on them and some don't you kind of upkeep it um so i'm very excited about that and when we drive our jeep in there it'll kind of you know uh have a lot of cool things to look at right we might see like you know a giant sauropod defending itself against a t-rex or something like that so yeah guys that's gonna be this episode let me know uh if you liked it um what you want to see changed maybe some other type of tour ideas that you want to go uh on in the future here at the jurassic conservation uh, <laughs> uh mega what am i saying big big complex of a bunch of different parks and uh, conservation centers all over the world um so yeah guys that's gonna be this uh for this video uh hope you guys want to check out some of the other videos i got going on this channel um but yeah, we're going to be continuing a bunch of Jurassic World evolution going forward. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I was, <laughs> I'm doing a long outro again. But anyway, I have been Jay. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And for me and our Baryonyx, I don't know, this is Dolly. Let's say this is Dolly. From Dolly, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time, peace out.